Hola, 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 buenos días, buenas noches, buenas tardes, cualquier hora es donde tú estás. Hola y bienvenido a otro episodio de Hablamos Español. Y esta noche tenemos Vincent Gale. Buenas noches, Vincent. Buenas noches, buenas noches. Gracias por la invitación. Oh, sí, claro. Y gracias por eh, aceptarla, ¿no? Claro, so, hello, everybody. Fine. Thank you so much for viewing another episode of Hablamos Español. Tonight, we have Panamanian Vincent Gale. <laughs> and <Yes>. I'm very <laughs> I'm very excited um, to have him with us. If this is your first time watching Hablamos Español, gracias y bienvenido. Um, we exist, or this platform exists, to shine a light on those who are bringing uh, diversification to the foreign language learning space. You know, so often... When you're in a Spanish class or any other language for that matter, you don't see a lot of melanated folks. So you may start to think, can I do this? Is this for me? Why don't black people learn other languages? Well, we do. So um, that is why this platform exists. And it's been a pleasure doing interviews with so many people. And Vincent in particular is an Afro-Latino. So in case you don't know what that means, you know, you think Latino, you think Hispanic, you probably think somebody that's Mexican, right? Or a I don't know, caramel brownish <laughs> color, you know, and you yeah. don't, but, but there are many of us. These are like, to me, Afro Latinos are our cousins. So just like in the this diaspora, we were drugged over here to the US. Um, others were drugged to Brazil or Panama or Guatemala, you know, all through Latin America, all through Latin America. And why did they learn Spanish and we learned English? Well, who colonized them? So it all goes back to that. But um, so, so, this may be an eye-opening moment for you to realize, hey, there are Latinos that look just like me. Okay, that's enough. You know right, your story, so, huh? <laughs> your history. I, learned, I mean, you know, when you learn another language, you got to learn the history, you got to learn the culture. It all comes with it. But um, that's enough. I'm going to stop talking about that. Or that's the end of the intro. So the first thing that each guest and I do is an introduction in Espanol. So this is your opportunity, whether you're um, advanced, intermediate, beginner, whatever. This is your chance, especially if you're a beginner, to see what you do know. What do you know? Don't be shy. Don't be nervous. You can do it. Think, see what you pick up out of my conversation with Vincent. And at the end, we're going to do the same introduction, but in English. All right. So here we go. Vámonos. So Vincent, um, sabemos ya que tu nombre es Vincent, no es Vicente, Vincent. Um, pero, y pues, yo he dicho, ya, yeah, ¿de dónde eres? No, Panamá, ¿no? Mm -hmm. Panamá. ¿Cuál, cuál, ¿Cuál ciudad o pueblo, comunidad? ¿Cómo se bueno, llama? Yo, soy de, yo soy de la capital de Panamá, del centro de, de la ciudad. ¿Cómo? Entonces, perdón. Perdón mi ignorancia. Do, ¿Cómo se llama la capital? Panamá. <risa> <risa> Ok, perdón. Uh. Panamá es el país. Está dividido en estados. Nosotros le llamamos provincias. Oh, ok. Estados. Y el estado, en, el estado, el estado del que soy yo se llama Panamá. Y en el estado de Panamá está la ciudad de Panamá. Sí, wow. Es el papá de Panamá, de Panamá. Panamá, 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 Panamá. Como, suena como una canción. Panamá, Panamá, Panamá. <ríe> sí. Pero no entiendo por qué. Es igual aquí en los Estados Unidos, pero cuando yo estaba viviendo en España, el, la región uh -huh. se llama Murcia, okay. pero también la capital se llama Murcia Mur también. Entonces, entiendo. Sí, es algo más muy de nuestra cultura, es algo muy de nuestra cultura llamar las cosas igual. Así. <risa> la, la repetición, ¿no? La repetición. No sabía que, estaba, que estuviste en España. Qué chévere, qué chévere. <risa> sí, por nueve meses, más o bueno. menos. No, no fue mucho tiempo, pero fue suficiente para aprender, mejorar mi español, mm -hmm. todo eso. Mm. Mm. Ok, ¿qué más? Eh, tu trabajo o trabajos, pero ¿qué, ¿qué haces para ganar dinero? Bueno, tengo algunos trabajos. Uh, tengo el que nos conocimos en el restaurante, mm -hmm. que es uno de mis trabajos así por la noche. Um, trabajo de mesero me ayuda, lo cual me ayuda mucho a practicar mi inglés. Yo estoy un poco al revés de, tu, de ti y de tus, de tus televidentes, porque sí. ustedes hablan inglés y quieren aprender español. Sí. Yo hablo español y he aprendido inglés como mi segunda lengua, 
Y acá lo he practicado, lo vengo practicando. Eh, mm -hmm. Yo soy un poco introvertido, aunque no parezca mucho. En mi trabajo principal, en la oficina, yo trabajo para una compañía que maneja Medicaid, la parte financiera de Medicaid. ¡Wow! Y es un trabajo 9 to 5, o sea, de 9 a 5, oficina, um, así en el escritorio todo el día. No, ¿Sí? no, la verdad no converso mucho. Sí. No converso mucho. En donde sí, así me suelto y hablo más en el restaurante, porque ahí tengo que hacerlo, tengo que hablar con los clientes, tengo que que vender, tengo que hablarle la comida y qué sabe mejor y todo esto. O sea, tengo esos dos, tengo esos otros dos trabajos y también en, eh, he estado últimamente... ¿Un, ¿Un tercer trabajo? Sí, sí, no, bueno, tengo, la verdad tengo, bueno, tenía cuatro, la verdad. Ay, le, trabajas <risa> como un hombre de Jamaica, ¿no? <risa> un hombre del Caribe. Pues, Pan tenía... ¿Panamá es una parte del Caribe o no? Perdón. Sí, 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 Panamá es parte del Caribe. Tenemos una parte, tenemos una parte de Panamá que, que colinda con el mar Caribe. Así. O sea, okay. nos consideramos caribeños. He escuchado, sí, no. es, es un broma, pero más o menos, no es una broma, pero que los, los hombres de Jamaica trabajan muy uh, duro, entonces. Muy duro. Sí, <risa> sí nosotros somos, somos caribeños también, una parte. En, en, en sí, en parte sí, o sea, la gente morena, la gente morena en Panamá, vienen de dos áreas, o sea, sus, sus ancestros vienen de dos áreas en Panamá, o de Colón, o de otro lugar que se llama Bocas del Toro, que son dos partes que, que colindan con el Caribe. Que colindan con el Caribe. Colón, ¿y cómo se llama el otro? Bocas del Toro. Bocas Boca del Toro. Y yeah, Bocas del Toro, en Fulro. Bocas del Toro. Bocas del Toro. Ajá. Mi Bocas. familia es de Colón, es de Colón. Pero son las dos partes en las que la mayoría de la gente morena viene de Panamá. Ok, pero los trabajos, entonces, para Medicaid, trabajo mesa, para me, trabajo mesajero, para, o mesero, el mesero, mesero, mesero. Um, y número tres. Tenía una compañía de contra, de contrati, de, o sea, era contratista de, de renovaciones, así de pintura y de eh, like in-houses, remodeling. Uh -huh. um, eso, das, das, eso es así como de vez en cuando, cuando me sale algún contrato, no es algo tan, tan fijo. Uh -huh. Y el otro era interpreting, interpretaba para... ¡Oh, sí, claro! Sí, ahí en el restaurante uh -huh. conocí a una muchacha, hay, hay otra mesera ahí, otra sí. mesera, a Laura, ella tiene una compañía de interpretación, interpreta, oh. para, interpreta para escuelas, así para conferencias de padres y maestros, y también interpreta, um, la mamá ella interpreta en, en juzgados, uh -huh. en, cor, en la corte, y ella también uh -huh. interpreta para o sea, citas médicas. Entonces ahí ella me contrataba para, para ir a las escuelas a contratar. ¡Oh, qué bueno! Interpretar. Y es necesario, especialmente aquí en Arkansas, porque uh -huh. hay, muchos, hay muchos latinos aquí, más que 200 mil creo, sí, pero sí. Se, según o aún, aún hay una falta de intérpretes y conexiones sí. con la comunidad latina es, es, es una necesidad es necesario ok, sí. entonces por qué en, en algún momento en tiempo tuviste cuatro trabajos cuando tuviste el tiempo respirar <risa> bueno eh, como, como digo, o sea, no son trabajos fijos de siempre Uh, lo de traducir es de vez, era de vez en cuando, cuando había conferencias. Oh, la mayoría de los trabajos fueron flexibles. Son flexibles, correcto. Y incluso el de mesero no es todos los días. Bueno, ya lo dejé, ya lo dejé, pero no era todos los días. Uh -huh. Era algunas noches. Ahora estoy más concentrado en, en el principal, en el de Medicaid y en la, en la universidad. Estoy, I'm taking some classes, estoy tomando cursos en la universidad y ahora me estoy enfocando en eso. Ok, sí. un hombre, un trabajador, Vicente a trabajar. Ok, uh, <ríe> ¿qué va a ser? Ok, cuando tienes tiempo de respirar y descansar, cuando hay tiempo, ¿qué haces en tus, uh, para tus pasatiempos? En mis tiempos libres, libre? bueno, mm -hmm. me gusta mucho um, salir con amigos. Um, bueno, ahora mismo no se puede mucho, uh, pero me gustaba, me gusta mucho ir a, la, a ver películas al cine. 
me gusta ir a comer con mis amigos, ir a un restaurante, me gusta mucho el fútbol, no el de ustedes, no el de no, American Football. La, la Latinoamérica. Real, real fútbol. <risa> el fútbol real. <risa> Eso es el, um, el soccer, lo que ustedes conocen como soccer, es, uh -huh. es uno de mis pasatiempos favoritos. Me encanta jugar con mis amigos. Um, también me voy al gimnasio. Y así me mantengo ocupado. Así eso me mantiene ocupado el resto del tiempo, cuando puedo respirar. <risa> Ok, perfecto. ¿Qué más tenemos? Díganos un poco de tu familia, um, mamá, papá, hermanos, cualquier, cualquiera persona, pero tu familia. Sí, bueno, tengo, tengo mi mamá, tengo mi papá, están los dos allá en Panamá. Están allá en Panamá. Ah, yo me vine para acá a Estados Unidos con mi mamá. Mi mamá, hace cinco años nos vinimos, mi mamá se jubiló y sacó sus papeles, sacó la visa para venir para acá, sacó mi visa también. Okay. Y así nos vine con ella. Aquí estuvimos. Ella trabajó acá también por un tiempo para el Estado también. Pero lo dejó y se regresó a Panamá. Ahora mismo está allá. Le gusta estar allá. Le gusta estar allá. Es más... Se siente más relajada allá. Ya sí. Acá. Sí, más tranquilo. Sí, más tranquila, sí. Tengo dos hermanos allá en Panamá también. Mayores sí. que yo. Y tengo una hermana en Nueva York que también es mayor que yo. Yo soy el menor de la familia. Tú eres el bebé, ok. Sí. Yo soy el bebé. <ríe> soy el bebé de la familia, sí. Sí, así que tengo mis hermanos allá. Um, tengo, me da risa, bueno, no me da risa, pero curioso que siempre, siempre yo um, le preguntaba a mis hermanos cuándo me iban a dar un sobrino, cuándo me iban a dar un sobrino, una sobrina, un sobrino. Y hasta ahora que, que estoy acá, uno de mis hermanos tuvo una niña a la que no he conocido bien, porque está allá. Uh -huh. Pero sí, tengo una sobrina y está allá en, en Panamá. Esa es mi familia cercana. Ok. Tengo Entonces, muchos primos tú, acá. Y, tú y tu hermana son los únicos en los Estados Unidos. Sí, yo y mi hermana somos los únicos que estamos acá. Uh -huh. Ok, Correcto. perfecto. Dos preguntas más. Eh, tu cantante favorita de Latinoamérica o latino. Y... Español favorito en, es, en España. Tu canción favorita en español. <risa> Mi canción favorita, bueno. Canción escucho, y cantante. Escucho mucha música, escucho demasiada música, soy muy variado. Así que te puedo decir algunos cantantes favoritos que tengo dependiendo del género. Ok, ok, Un, uno de los favoritos. Uno, uno de mis favoritos. De okay. um, uno de mis favoritos. Voy a decir. Uf. Voy a decir. No sé, escucho mucha. Escucho mucha, mucha música tranquila, así relajada, mucha balada. Me gusta bastante Sin Banderas. Um, no sé si los he escuchado, son unos, son unos argentinos. No. no. Um, pero estoy buscando ahora por Google. Dos hombres blancos. Sí, 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 son argentinos. Um, Pero cantan R&B. Sí, sí, debería de escuchar. Cantan muy bien, cantan muy bonito. Uh, tienen canciones muy buenas, muy buenas. Okay. Muy buenas Necesito muy buenas. escuchar. <risa> Sin banderas. O, o, mi nombre para ellos es Dos Hombres Blancos. Dos Hombres Blancos. <risa> otro, otro nombre para, para el grupo. Otro nombre. <risa> Sin banderas, oh. also known as dos hombres blancos. <risa> ok, y canción, una de las canciones favoritas. De una de mis canciones favoritas. Bueno, una canción favorita mía de ellos. Me gusta mucha de ellos. Tienen, a, tienen una que se llama A Varios cien, Kilómetros. Sí, está aquí. Habla, está kilómetros, aquí. sí. Habla de, habla de dos personas así que se quieren, pero están a la distancia. Mm. Kilómetros, kilómetros, I don't know if you know what kilómetros, ¿sabes qué es kilómetros? Kilómetros. Sí, yes, kiló ajá, kilómetros. <risa> so, ellos están hablando de la distancia que hay entre oh. ellos, muchos kilómetros. Oh, oh. qué no, bonito, qué dulce. Yeah, yeah. Sí, sí no, no usamos kilómetros aquí, yeah. pero yeah. Eh, eh, soy acostumbrado, acostumbrada a eso, porque ahora mi coche, yo cambié lo, las... No, ¿Cómo se dice settings? No es una herramienta, pero más o menos yo cambié los settings de mi coche 
Y ahora eh, no dicen mi, millas o millajes, dicen kilómetros. kilómetros. Y cuando yo voy al, a cambiar mi aceite, algo como así, y el mecánico me pregunta cuántos, cuántos millas, no sé, porque es, dice kilómetros. <risa> <risa> pero entonces sí, no, comprendido, com comprendido completamente. ok, el fin es el fin de la porción de español All right, guys, so that is the end of the Spanish portion kudos to you, aplauso para ti you hung in there and um, like I said at the end, we will do Vincent's intro in English um, at the end, and so you can get confirmation see what you got right and what you didn't All right, so I'm going to start. I know I sent you some questions, Vincent, already. Yeah. But I'm going to start with what I want to know. I don't know why there are so many Panamanians here. Um, why, out of all places, uh-oh, looks like you froze up right after our little intro. Vincent. I'll wait. Maybe. I don't know. The computer died. Hey. Vincent, hey, you're back. Yeah, yeah I'm back. Okay. So hey. I, even though I sent you some questions, mm -hmm. I'm going to start with what I want to know. I don't know why there are so many Panamanians here. Out of all the places y'all could have come, gone, you know, why Arkansas? Is there a program that's saying, come to Arkansas? Like, you may be the, I don't know, fifth, sixth, seventh Panamanian person? Yeah. I don't know and how I'm many just, Panamanians here. I'm just like, wow, the Panamanians. And I mean, I know, let me be clear. I know five Panamanians isn't a lot, but it's just something I yeah. know that's like, because most people in Arkansas from Latin America, you're going to get somebody from Mexico, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere, not Panama. That's all I'm saying. Yes. So I'm like, what are the what are the Panamanians doing here? So you have you met any others? Have you noticed not the really, Panamanians? No. Not really. Like, probably like three. Probably like three. Well, besides my family, my aunt. This is my family. Um, I know a couple, a couple. They're not that many, as you say. Well, there's maybe, not, maybe they're the same people I met. Maybe yeah, we just maybe. met the same people. Uh, this man named Domenico, something like that. He's an older gentleman. He goes to some church in North Little Rock. I, um, I met this woman and her grandma. I don't know their names. I mean, I don't know these people personally, but you know, just talking. And then they're like, I'm from Panama. Why are you here, baby? But, okay, so for example, you, you said, if I understood you right correctly, you you're coming to the U.S. and to Arkansas. Your mom is the reason you came here, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why did she pick Arkansas? Well, because she had a sister here. Um, all my uncles, all my aunts and uncles from my mom's side came to the States when they were younger, 18, 19 years old. My mom was actually the only one that stayed um, that stayed back. And now that she retired, she wanted to be with her brothers and sisters. That's why she picked Arkansas. I don't even think I knew what Agasa was. <laughs> yeah. um, if if I would have to de to decide, I would have picked Agasa. Probably I would have went to New York with my sister. Mm -hmm. But my mom said Agasa, so and I and I was following her, so I came to Agasa and I I, and I stayed. So you have been here how many years? How long have you been? Five here? years. Five years now. Okay. Okay. Five years. Um, you mentioned also the process of securing a visa because I'm spoiling the introduction, but you mentioned in your introduction you end up working you work for Medicaid. Yeah. Now, how does that work since you you know you're considered an immigrant? I don't know if that's you know, some people don't like that word, but you know, you're not from here. So how were you able to secure work? Because a lot of people they find that very difficult when they uh well, immigrate. Um, well, I came I'm a permanent resident, so it's not that hard for me. To, it was not that, that hard for me to get job to get a job. Um, I, I'll be there are some positions in the state that I cannot do because they are only for citizens. Um, but um, yeah, it's not that difficult when you have um, when you have either a working visa or a permanent resident visa. With those two, you can uh, like like really get a job easily. So how did you even get a permanent resident status? What did you have to do for that? Um, my mom took care of all, of all of that. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like twenty years old when. when well, go happened. mom! Yay, mom! Yeah, you go mom! Yeah, she. Um, I was like twenty years old. Um, 
actually I never it never crossed my mind coming here, coming to the States. Um that's why you don't see a lot of Panamanians here because we don't really that's not something like that that a lot of Panamanians do come to the States. Um I never thought about it, it never crossed my mind. And actually it is it is is it is a funny story that I always tell people that um when my mom got my got her paperwork done, she asked me if I wanted to come with her. And I said no, I was like no, I'm not gonna go, um, cause I was I was studying. I, I had I had a good job in Panama. If my mom left, if my mom came here, I was gonna stay with the house, with the car. I was gonna be, I was gonna be set. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so I didn't want it to come at first, even though I had paperwork, uh, paperwork to come. But I, I talked to a neighbor of mine that uh, he was he's American, but he retired and I went to Panama. He married a Panamanian and went back there. And he was like, "Hey, just go out, just go ahead and try it. Just, just go try it for a year or something. And if you don't like it, you can always come back." And he he also told me, "You know how many people around the world would wish to have paperwork?" That's it. That's it because the fact that you have that permanent that yeah. has saved you so much headache. That's why I'm just so yeah. surprised. Like every person I know that's immigrated here um, has a you know a job that but they have to scrape. You know, mm-hmm, scrape mm-hmm. for money, or maybe they marry somebody and that helped them. But yeah. the fact that you came here with that, like the, the neighbor was right. You just don't know how bless much of a blessing that is. Yeah, well, I guess you do now. I guess you yeah. do now. Yes, with that he convinced me, and I was like, yeah, he's right. I can always come back if I don't if I don't like it. Um, five years now, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> so, um, let me see. Where was I going with this? Yikes. I forgot my question because even even that within that there were so many questions I had. Um, I guess I'll go with what I just thought about. What has made you stay five years? Oh nope, stop. No, I thought no. You said a lot of Panamanians don't even come to the states. Why? Because because personally, I know the U.S. has ups and downs. I'm not saying the U.S. is the best place mm-hmm. in the world, but many people outside of the U.S. think that, so they want to come over. So why yeah. is it that it's common in Panama? They're like los Estados Unidos, psh, no gracias. You know why is that? The way that I think about it is, um, the people that that migrate to another country, they're sacrificing a lot of things. They're sacrificing family, friends, uh, the, their culture, a lot of things. Their you, their their like memories in their country, and um, something has to like motivate them to 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 do all that sacrifice. And I think, um, without without with all the respect in the world, I think that um, the economies in the other countries, in the other Central American countries push a lot of people to come to the States. But um, even though the American economy is way better than Panamanian economy, I do consider that it is well enough in Panama for not to, for people not to have to decide to make the sacrifice of, of leaving all that behind to go to another country. I mean, you, you do have a lot of Panamanians here, um, like not here in Arkansas, like in Miami or New York, but if you compare it to all the other countries, Mexico, Honduras, Nicaragua, no. yeah, it's not that yeah. many. Yeah, it's not yeah many. I know. Okay, yeah. that, that's a sensible answer, though. If any country, if you're a, if the economy stable and there's not a war, mm-hmm. people are like, you know, I'm I'm good. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, what has kept you here for five years? Um, I mean. I got to experience a good economy, y'all. <laughs> um, I, ha- I have a good job. I am. I got this job almost like three years in, like three years in, three months in. Oh, right oh, away. Like right away, right away, I got it. Um, and uh, it is a, it was a, it is a great opportunity. I'm still there. Um, while I finish my my school, when I finish school, I'm also studying. So I don't wanna all this effort I'm putting into school, I don't want to throw it away going back to Panama. And are um, you at UALR? I'm at uh, Pulaski Tech. I'm, I'm doing a two plus two program with Pulaski Tech and UCA. So okay. I'll, this year I'll have to go to UCA next year, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. So those are the two things that, um, that um, have, two of the things that have kept me here. I've also made a lot of friends stay um, while I've been here, uh, a lot of good relationships. And I, I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it. You, 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 state, the state of Arkansas have a lot to offer. 
that's so nice. <laughs> what? So you know what? That's a good. Let's make that a question. Um, what do you like most about Arkansas as a state? You already mentioned you're here for the economy and all the in general, but mm-hmm. what about Arkansas have you enjoyed most? Or it could be more than one thing. Yeah. Um, I like the people I've met. I, I have I have a lot of good friends here. A lot of good friends. Um, the the financial side is also a very important part because you know other places are more more expensive to live. Amen. Like, living, yeah. Amen. And yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the big things that have kept me here in Arkansas because I'm I'm starting my career or starting my life, and uh, it's good to do that in 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 a place or in a setting that is not that competitive. Amen. Like other places. Um. I do like the the city life, so that's something I do not like about Arkansas. Because I'm from the city, I'm from the, like downtown Panama, so I like that fast paced life. That's no. always something to do. Always every- Little Rock, Little Rock <laughs> is the best you get in Arkansas. It's Little Rock, and then and I mean, I like I like country life. I like rural, right? Mm-hmm. So I, that's why Arkansas is great for me. But if you want a lot, a big city, I guess you got to go to Memphis real yeah. quick, or you know. Head to Dallas, so <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'm getting used to to the to the country living, like the the easy pace, like not traffic. I don't I surely don't miss traffic. Amen. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm thinking like uh probably if I move if I ever move from Arkansas, it's not gonna be to like a huge big city, or just a little bit bigger. But but I, I don't know. I'm 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 the way it's looking is that I'm gonna stay here for a little while. That's nice. Now, how often, since you say you do like the big city, how often do you go visit your sister in New York? And she's in oh, New York City. New York oh, City, yes, yes. Like. So how often do you visit her? And I don't know, does that give you the taste of the city life you need? Yeah, like I go like every every other year, every other year. Mm-hmm. When I don't go to my to my sisters, um, I I got family in Texas, like in Houston, in uh, San Antonio. Um, mm-hmm. In Miami, I have family in Miami, so so yeah, so I travel. I travel travel quite a lot. Try um tra- quite a lot, um, cause um, but that's what I'm saying. Like I'm think I'm getting used to the to this kind of life, cause even when I go to the big city, I like it for a while, but I kind of miss like the easy pace, mm-hmm. laid back pace. Um, yeah. so yeah, so I, right now I think I like the big city just to go visit a little while. But uh, yeah, I, I I miss my Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> we're rubbing off on you, Vincent. Wearing you <laughs> down. Wearing you down. Okay. Um. Hmm. I guess we can transition to your learning of the English language, your acquisition of the mm-hmm. English language, because uh, you speak very, you know, very good English. Um, to me, but now, in a lot of other countries, they make their children learn English right away. So is that a thing in Panama? Are you all learning English in school, or how does that go? I mean, yeah, the the um the school program in Panama uh, has English in place. Um, the public setting not that good as the private sc- as the private schools. Um, so you would see a lot of people that can afford private schools speaking better better English than people that don't. Um, I was we were blessed that our parents spoke English, our grandparents spoke English. So it's just it, they just pass it down generation from generation, and um, actually I came before I came before in two thousand two thousand nine I think it was uh, I was a lot younger then uh, my English was even better than what it is right now because um, we grew up learning both at the same time almost almost at the same time and uh, we stayed here for a good while but then we went back to Panama and uh, I just stopped using it. Just stop using English, just enough to pass English classes, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I lost I lost practice, and I, I'm just picking it up again. So, so you're kind of starting over, right, then the level, and um, so how have you started over? So when you okay, so for example, you came here five years ago, you didn't know as much English, I guess. What did you have to do to get it back, or what what have you been doing to improve? just um practicing like 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 when you went to spain like just being in a in a country where you have to use it like you don't have an option like you, <laughs> like this is when we have an, an like an analogy like 
you're you're in the water. You you either swim or you drown. Like you got you gotta use it. Thank you, swim. And, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just being here and having to use it day on a daily basis is is I have improved a lot. And it's not that I it's not that I I lost all of it. Um, I knew quite a bit when I came. The thing is that uh, in Panama, you don't use it that much. I didn't use it that much. Just 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 for school, like one or two classes per year. Um, and they're not that demanding. So I was like, just the little I knew or the little I practiced was good enough. I got you. To, to pass them, yeah. With you working for Medicaid, you said you got the job within three months. Was the fact that you speak both two languages a factor? Is that why, that, why they hired you because you were a Spanish speaker as well? Um, I don't think so because I've never done anything. As, well, we sometimes the customer service department gets calls in Spanish. Um, I have a family member that works there too, and um, she she speaks Spanish, so. Every time they used to get calls, they used to call her like, hey, come on, get, <laughs> take this call for us, please. And just one time, she was not there, and they asked me to take a call. Mm -hmm. That was the only, the, the only moment I used Spanish. So I don't think, I don't think it was like taken into consideration when they, when they hired me. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. Um, let's see. So let's go take it back to Panama. Are there, because every Panamanian I know is Moreno. But, yeah. <laughs> the ones that I know here are all white. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask you. Because I've only seen melanated Panamanians. Are there white Panamanians? Yeah. I, I, I would consider that they're, the ratio is more white than, than melanated. Oh, okay. Yeah. I learned something new today. Because I don't see it. <laughs> when, when I meet somebody from Panama, they are Moreno. Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you think? So you said more. So maybe I get 70%, 30%. 60%. And it's not like not only white, white, like as in like American white, like like Caucasian white, but like like a lot of um, natives, like 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 what like how you see the other like, yeah, mestizos. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that's the majority. Oh, like, okay. Mm -hmm. So mestizos. Mm -hmm. So la mayoría, but they're kind, of, now, they're kind of brown, but they're not like African, like they're not right. like African descent. But so, mm -hmm. but pero hay blancos también. Mm -hmm. blanco, no, definitely, blanco? definitely, definitely, blanco blanco. Okay. Why does no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Como bueno sin bandera es de. Now. I you mentioned earlier I, I knew my my history on some things and I'm still learning. And so you may not be, well, you're from there, but I don't, just because a person is from a place doesn't mean they always know it. So I'm not putting that pressure mm -hmm. on you. But what can you tell us about the Panama Canal or Canal? Because that's one thing that viewers, you know, I don't know you either, but I think that's for the people who've heard of Panama in the United States, that's like the one thing they've heard, the Panama Canal. Right? Panama. So, you know, from, from my knowledge, it existed to help with, transportation across what the oceans and give boats a way to cut through mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. take cargo. Um it brought jobs but then it did some damage as well like maybe hurt the culture or something. I, I'm a little blurry on, on what I do know. So just from your perspective, knowledge, whatever you heard from your family, what can you tell us about the Panama Canal? Oh yeah that's just a just a long story behind the Panama Canal. It was started, the, the, the Spaniards were the ones that started building it. I think it was like in the 16th or 7th, 17th century. They started working on it. Um, I'm sorry, who? The Spaniards. Spaniards, Spaniards, I got you. Yeah, mm -hmm. like way back then when they were still like kings, um, they started working on it because um, like the other alternative is going all the way down to I uh, think Argentina. Like going all the way down to the con like to where the continent ends and come back up. Mm -hmm. That was the only way. So um, they were looking for um for a um, how you call that a narrow the narrowest place passageway the narrowest place in the continent to 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 cut through. And I think Panama is 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 considered the narrowest place in the continent, and that's why that's why it's it's an ideal spot 
to make something like the canal. So they started building it. Um, it took a it took a long time to build because um, Panama is a tropical place with a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of like it's it's hot, it's humid, it's just perfect for diseases. So all the people that went to 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 help build the canal were dying from malaria and all these other diseases because of because of mosquito bites. So it took a while. I think the Spaniards stopped doing it, and then at some point, the uh, United States took over building it. And that's why um, there's a lot of people of of African ascendants in Panama because they were brought or they were brought from Africa to to work on the canal. Or I've heard also that they came from the islands, like from Jamaica, Barbados, or the islands to to work on the canal. Because yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so the canal was built, and um, it actually is put in place that because the two oceans are not in like in the same height. Like one of them, I don't know which one, but one of them is higher than the other one. So the canal, what what the canal does is that it gets you in these rooms where they are filled with water, or the water goes down. So they put you in the level with the other one. So if you're coming from the highest one, you get in a room. And then the water is taking out. You get a level with the other ocean, and then you continue your travel. Yeah, it's, it's not that simple. I'm, I'm already simplifying. <laughs> no, hey, keep the it simple. I don't know. Keep it maybe simple. Okay. <laughs> I'm already simplifying the engineering of, of the canal. It's, it's, it's an amazing work of art. Uh, work of engineering is is. If you ever have the chance, because they do uh, like like tours in the canal. You know, you don't do the all route. You don't do the whole route. You like you do a couple of those rooms because it's not just one of those rooms. You, like they bring you down periodically or bring you up periodically. Um, if you ever have the chance to do it, um, it's really interesting to see it firsthand. Are there any, are there any negatives or downsides? So it obviously brought economy. It brought yeah. in different cultures. Are there any negatives that that you're aware of of the the canal's existence? Um, as of today, I don't think I don't think like out of the top of my mind, I don't think there's any negative right now. Mm -hmm. Um, probably when they were building it, all the all the problems it brought for the people that were building it, or 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 other administrative issues we had before it belonged to Panama. Because first, it belonged to the Americans, so it belonged to the United States. So probably that's when it had like a negative connotation to Panamanians because. It was in our country, but it was not ours. Mm -hmm. But now, now that it's under our administration, I think there's no, I don't think there's any negatives. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. And actually, actually, my mom worked for the canal like her whole life. She worked for the administrative administration of the canal. My as my grandfather also. No oh, family history. Okay. Um, speaking of work, working and jobs. You know, right now you have these different jobs and, and you're going to school. What are you going to school for? What do you really want to do? Like what, what career field interests you most? I'm doing computer science. I'm doing computer okay. science. We'll yeah. always have a job. <laughs> that's one of the things that, <laughs> that took me in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's I've always had that problem. Ever, ever since I graduated, I never knew what I wanted to do, like, it took me a while. I've been in and out of school, changing careers, but now I'm really serious in this. Um, I'm following through on this. I'm doubling down on this, and I think I'll, 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 I'll get it. Yeah, you'll always have a job. What you said, computer science, and I know that's a lot. That's a broad area. So, what specific area in that field? Um, like as you say, there's a lot of things you can do with that certificate, with that degree. You can do computer science. You can do IT, you can do cyber security, you can do data science, you can do data analysis, data analysis, you can do cloud computing, um, software development. Um, the ones that um draw more my draw my attention more are data analysis and uh, software development. Because I consider myself a very analytical person, so I think that my strengths are better suited for for those fields. And um, right now I'm like, I'm right now in a series of interviews 
to get my foot in the door in a, in a, an apprenticeship. Yay! That analysis, yeah. All right, well, we felicidades. Buenas suerte. Thank you. All right, so let me see here, because I was able to ask all that with no help, no assistance. So a lot of the questions won't relate to you because you already speak Spanish, you know, <laughs> um, and you already talked about, you know, your journey with English. Hmm. Okay, we'll go here. Now, if you don't open your mouth, a person thinks you're an African American male. How yeah. has that, you know, how how does that go? I guess the cra the craziest story, or just the most interesting experience, or you know, when people find out you're Afro Latino, you know, I guess the question, just how is that being here? Because in Arkansas, that's the you mentioned Miami, you mentioned Nueva York. Other country, excuse me, states have more diversity. So people, mm -hmm. people understand just because I'm this skin tone doesn't mean I'm white or black. You know, it's the people. But in Arkansas, we what do we have? We have white, black, Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> and even with Mexican, it's more than Mexican. But a lot of people don't understand. Hey, guys, not all Latinos, mestizos, are Mexicanos. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so in the average Arkansans mind, average, not all. You're black, you're white, you're Mexican. So, you being Afro Latino, how? I guess how does that go? I guess do you always surprise people. Do you still surprise people? Just tell us about that experience. Definitely, definitely. I still, to this day, I still surprise people. Um, I like, I like to go places like Hispanic places, and uh, you start just speak English. And uh, like, and whenever I have to like speak Spanish, and and I do, people are like, "What is it going on?" <laughs> and to this day, to this day, when I, when they hear when people hear me um speaking Spanish, I still get like weird looks, like, "Do you really speak Spanish? Where are you from?" Or yeah, like a lot of people, and a lot of people, a lot of people get surprised and then assume like Cuba or. Puerto Rico, La Republica Dominicana, yeah, yeah, Dominican Republic, yeah, yeah. But yeah, to this day, um, um, one of one of the funny stories that I have is, um, mm -hmm. I do like I used to do um a soccer league for kids every every winter is an indoor soccer league, um, and um one of the one of the kids in my team, um. I had a, I had a family that had their kids in my team, and they brought me another family. But the other person, the girl didn't knew, didn't know that I that I spoke Spanish, so she was speaking to me in English. Uh, but I knew she spoke Spanish, so I, I I replied to her in Spanish. But she was like she was like so unexpected of me speaking English or uh, Spanish that she continued to speak in English, and I was I was I was replying in Spanish. And she, she, and it was like automatic. She never, she was not realizing that I was talking to her in her, in her yeah, language. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I think that like it took like a good ten minutes for her to realize, like, hey, do you speak Spanish? Like, yes, I've been speaking to you. <laughs> I've been talking to you in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those people are so, so um, alienated. Like they're so um, strange to the idea of. And 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 not to judge them, because when I see another black person speaking Spanish, I'm also like, what? Yes, yes, that was me. Yes, that's me. That's how I'm gonna tell you. That's how I even learned Panamanians were here. This is how I learned Panamanians were here. I was working as a bilingual receptionist for one of the hospitals, and a young girl was in the lobby with her grandmother, and they looked just like me, maybe even a little darker, a little more melanin. And they're talking in Spanish, and I'm like, I'm looking like, what's going on? <laughs> what? what is going? On? Because I'm used to being not the only one, but one of the few, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. in, in Arkansas or my area, you know. Even though there are a lot, there are several of us here in Arkansas, believe it or not, born here or from here, and we learned naturally, like just like me. So, but I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, another validated person speaking Spanish, or <laughs> fourth. You know, I ended up asking, you know, what's up? And, and she told me they were from Panama. So that was my first experience with a Panamanian. But no, I get it. You Even though you, people are surprised by you, you get surprised Absolutely. when you yeah. see it too. Like, hey, I'm not alone. No, you know, no, it's, no, it's <laughs> no, 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like like your, like when we met, like I was speaking to you in, in English, but when your friend got there, I talked to her in Spanish because I knew she's she spoke Spanish. I would have never imagined that you spoke Spanish too. Surpresa. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. Now, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned, uh, but right before this, because we talk now, we're, I'm gonna segue to food. You just mentioned going to Mexican places, so when we don't have any Panamanian joints, I don't think, do we? Mm. But just Mexican, and there's a Honduran place, Honduran, mm -hmm. uh, Rosalinda, and then we have Buenos Aires, Argentina. That's all I there's know. A there's a Venezuelan one too. I don't know. In the in Cavanaugh, it's called Las Terrazas. It's really good. It's, oh it's, yes, yes, yes. I have heard. Yep. I, yes, know what I, I, know I think what I think that's the closest one to our cuisine. So I like it a lot. I like it a lot because it's really close to our cuisine. And that's just what I was gonna ask you. Where do you go to feel a little bit like home? Yeah, Las Terrazas. Um, or I have a friend that 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 I have a Panamanian friend and she cooks a lot. And sometimes when she, when when she makes something that I, she knows I miss, she'll give me she'll, like she'll she'll offer me some, and yeah, that that makes me think of home. That's nice. Yeah. Um, what? Because I end up having to learn, you know, different dishes from different places. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Buenos Aires, right? I didn't know of the Italian influence, the large waves mm -hmm. of Italian immigration. And that's why they have what Milanesa or whatever Milanesa, mm -hmm. Milanesa or things like that. So I end up learning or learning that um, they're very popular for their, for their steaks because yeah. of how they cook it and how they raise the cow, you know, so I've learned a lot. So what are some popular di Panamanian dishes? I don't um, know any. Panamanian dishes. Uh, what comes to mind? Uh, rice and chicken. It's, mm -hmm. it's that that yellow rice and chicken. You, I don't know if if you've had like Puerto Rican cuisine or Dominican cuisine. It's really close to that. Um, yellow rice and chicken. Okay. Um, plantains. Um, plantains. Um, it's actually funny plantains because we call they call it tostones. I don't know if you heard tostones. We call them patacones. So we have like Never that. Never heard war. that in my life. We have that war of which is the correct name. Of course, it's patacones. They, <laughs> they copied it and changed the name. Patacones. Yeah, we call them like the fried planting, the fried the, the, the green fly, fried plantains. Yeah, I see it, and it's flat. Mm -hmm. We call them patacones, and they call it tostones. Um, yeah. no. um, the tostones, the patacones with fish. That's really, really Panamanian. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. What kind of fish? Uh, I don't know the name is in English. Corvina. Corvina is really popular in Panama. Dictionary. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know the name in English. Corvina. 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 Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Corvina con la V chica. V. Aquí está. It is not even giving me an answer. All is a provincial Corvina pescado. Corvina. Okay, aquí está. Um, mm, mm. Oh my no. God, I don't, mm -mm. I don't have an answer. Regional, probably a regional fish. Maybe so. Maybe. Yeah, it's one of the all water. I keep seeing is Corvina. Maybe that's just what it's called, I guess. Well, maybe that's Corvina. what it's called in English too. And we also had the Pargo Rojo, and I, you call them red slap, red, red something. Snapper? Red, red snapper, yeah, Pargo Rojo. That's also Paraga, red. Paragarada, da, da. Paraga, okay? Uh, pargo rojo. Rojo, uh, red. Oh, rojo. Pargo. P A R G O. Pargo. Con pargo head. rojo. Yeah, now that's, yes, I'm familiar with that. We we yeah. eat snapper here. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, those, those, are, those are really Panamanian dishes. Um, empanadas. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, even in Panama, like depending on regions, you have a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for opening my eyes. Um, you already mentioned the weather. You said it's tropical, so you, I guess, it's just the same temperature all year, it's no hot, snow, all year, hot and humid all year long. No nothing. Okay. Well, you, nice. you do have you do have like a, a rainy season, but whenever it's not raining in the rainy season, it's hot, just hot. So you know, I have a friend from Africa. 
from uh, the Gambia, by, by the way. And she told me um, when we met in college, she said the first time she bought a coat was when she moved here. So is that the same for you? Because it's always nice and warm in Panama. Did you did you have did you have to buy a heavy coat once you got a here? Heavy coat. Yeah, yeah. I never had one of those. I never had one of those. And I, actually, the first one we bought was we went to we went to Spain to um um a couple of years like 2011, 2012, and we went in the winter when when in Spain is winter. So that was the first time I used like a heavy coat. Like yeah, because in Panama you don't you don't need that in Panama. Exactly. And actually, one time when I went back to Panama, when I left, you know, Arkansas has like crazy weather. One day it's hot. Like when when we're starting, one day you, you have like it's hot, and the next day it's cold. When I left, it was hot. I left like I think it was like two years ago, and winter started late. I left, it was hot, and when I came back, it was snowing. <laughs> and, and, you didn't didn't have a coat. and you didn't have a coat. Uh -oh. <laughs> you didn't have a coat. Uh oh. Uh <laughs> oh. And you know what? I know you. Well, I know you mentioned. Well, I don't know. I know you've been staying in the states for a while, and maybe staying in Arkansas. But if you go somewhere else, if you go more, more up north, it gets worse. It yeah, when I went, like when I went to New York, it's crazy. It's worse. I got. I the first time I went to New York to visit my sister. When I came back, I was like, say, I was really sick i came back really sick because my body didn't take that cold <laughs> it took that cold well it was real mm -hmm. even though i had like a heavy heavy coat i was still suffering i'm, I'm not yeah. accustomed to that yet. yeah like the, the worst i have experienced you're familiar with chicago yes yeah chicago. yeah mm -hmm. and so i have family there my origins are, are from there in a sense and um that's the worst I've experienced. And yeah. that's enough. It's bad. It's hard, but bad enough. I, I don't want to get any worse than that. <laughs> that's bad, yeah. Oof. Okay, well, yeah. well, that is it. Eso es todo. Um, por mi parte, that's all I have to ask. But this has been really, really nice, very insightful. Um, I've enjoyed it. I really oh, have. Me too. me too. So let's go ahead and wrap up and do your introduction in English, even though a lot of questions have been answered, but just for the viewer, so they can get confirmation on, on what we talked about earlier. Let's go over that again. So we know you're from Panama, and we know you're mm -hmm. from Vincent. Um, your job or a job? Oh, but you know what? Hold on. I ask you, you're from Panama, the country, but then I ask you, what's the name of the city you're from? Yeah. So, um, so I'm from the, the Republic of Panama. The country is called Panama. Uh, we're divided in provinces, what you call states. My province is called Panama too. Um, and uh, in that province, the city is called Panama too. So I'm from the city of Panama, of the province of Panama, of the Republic of Panama. <laughs> so when you send mail home, did you have to write Panama, Panama, Panama? When you send uh, mail? No, like, no our, our, our mail system is not as close, not even close as as sophisticated as as, as y'all. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not. Wait a minute, stop! I never thought about that. What does that even mean? Like y'all don't even get mail? What does I've that mean? I've never, I've never. The first time I sent mail was here. Was, was here in the states. I've never, I've never sent nor received mail. Being in Panama, <laughs> yeah, it's not, I mean, not. Wait a minute! And then you said yeah. you're from the city, like I'm from the city. Yeah, I'm just confused. So. If a company wants to get in touch with you back home, they don't send you mail. They don't send you a letter in the mail. We do. We do. Uh, we do most of the things. We do them in person. You you have to go. Like you have to if if you want if you want to do like a um a, um how you say that like um a process a governmental process with the state or something like that you gotta go to the office you gotta go in person. Wow. Yeah, our mail system is not even close. I mean, I've seen like mail offices and mail spots, but um, it's 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 more like for a couple, like just a couple. I, I'm guessing just a couple of people do that. It's not as generalized as here. It, it, wow. Yeah, you do a lot of things. That's all I know is mail. I have some letters now. Mail, yeah. mail. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, and I don't think I've, I've like I'm not accustomed to it, so I think. I've sent totally, I can count it with one hand, 
how many mails I've sent since I've been here because I'm not accustomed to it. I'd rather go in person or something because that's, that's what I'm accustomed to. Yeah. Do you, but you don't send mail back home to your family, send them things? Nothing? Um, just I've sent a couple stuff just to my mom whenever she needs something. Mm. I'll send her, I'll send her like, yeah. But I send her, I send it to like FedEx, but she has to pick it up at FedEx. She, she they don't take it to your house. She, you, gotta, you gotta go pick it up. I got you. Once again, once again, in person. In person. Yeah, you gotta go in person. You gotta, you gotta walk it. <laughs> okay. So you're from Panama, Panama, Panama. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now your job or jobs, what do you do to earn money? Oh, what I do to earn money? The, the little money I earned, um, I earned it uh, being a waiter. One of, that's one of my gigs, being a, a waiter at a, an Argentinian restaurant. Um, besides that, I also interpret for schools, like in parent teacher conferences. Um, another gig I have is um, construction um, contracts. Um, I get contracts and um, I subcontract those contracts. Um, and mainly my main job is um, I work as a claim examiner for a company that manages the financial part of Medicaid. Yeah, All so. right. And then and what I told him earlier you, 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 that, yeah. <laughs> and what I told him earlier, in case you uh, missed it, he works like a Jamaican man because, you know, the, the, the expression Jamaicans work hard or something like that. So he's working like a Jamaican. Come on now. Woo. Yeah, Jamaican, yeah. <laughs> Four jobs off and on. OK. Um, so then that led me to ask your pastimes when you have time. You know, what do you do in your free time? I like to go to the movies. I, I love movies. I, love, I, I don't like TV, I don't like watching TV at home, but uh, I love movies like going to the movie theater and watch a movie. I like going with friends. I like going out with friends to to eat, to try stuff. I don't know if you. I don't know if you've tried. Like I like to try stuff, like going to the um, armory or going to the. I don't know if you you tried that the, the place in downtown where you throw an axe. Axe throwing, yes, sir. I have yeah. not. My husband has done it. I have not. Yeah, I like to try. I like to try new stuff with my, my friends, um, skating or whatnot. Um, I like eating out with friends too. And uh, my main hobby is uh, the real, real football, not American football, the real one, the real deal, <laughs> the one that you call, <laughs> the one that y'all call soccer. Um, that's like my main hobby. Um, I can go days just playing, hours just playing. Mm -hmm. Time just goes by. Yeah. That's nice. You know, I didn't ask you this earlier, but you mentioned friends, and you mentioned them several times. How have you made friends here? What are you? Where are you getting the friends from? Um, I have a lot of, main, mainly my friends are Hispanic because um, I mentioned that I'm intro, I'm kind of an introvert. Um, so English is, for me, it's hard to make friends in English because um, I always feel like this. Oh. I always feel, even though I, my English is good enough, mm -hmm. I always mentally think that like there's a barrier. Oh. And when I get nervous, I start like mixing words and getting like tangled. So it's easier for me to make Hispanic friends because, I mean, and I, the culture is very similar. Uh, so I make friends playing soccer. I make friend, friends in, in church. Um, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I, um, so at church, I make a lot of my friends. I make them at church. And um, at work, at the restaurant, I made a lot of, a, a lot of good friends at the restaurant. Um, and yeah. And so stop right there. That's another question. Is that the common religion in Panama? Seven day? No, Africa? not at all. The, the common religion is Catholic. Catholic. That's what I thought. Okay, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Muy bien. Eh, tell us about your family. We already talked about them quite a bit, but your family. Yeah, I got my mom and my pops. Uh, they're back home. They they um they stayed. My mom came for a couple of years. She's the one that she's the one that brought me, but she she went back already. Mm -hmm. Um, I got two brothers in Panama too. I got a niece in Panama, and uh, that I'm dying to meet. Um, I got and I have a sister in New York. That's my my close family. I have a lot of cousins here in New York that um I don't really have that close relationship with them because they grew up here and I grew up in Panama and they're like way older than me. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's like my way, most immediate family. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did. And the last question was your favorite, or one of them, one of your favorite Spanish songs and one of your favorite Spanish speaking groups. My one of my favorite Spanish speaking groups is the two uh, white guys. 
<laughs> also known as Simbalderas. Uh -huh. But their main name is the two guys. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. Conocido como. Okay. All right. And song. And, um, one of the songs that I most like about them from them is um, Kilometers. In English, you would call them Kilometers. And they talk about people that are like in long distance relationships that um they talk about the um how hard it is having all those kilometers between them yeah mm -hmm. que bueno, que bonito. Ay. Yeah. okay well that is it this has been un placer para me oh, the pleasure is mine. The was mine um i don't know when i'm coming back to buenos aires but maybe i'll come one night when you're there and and, <laughs> and i can see you again Definitely, definitely. It's, it's been it's been a fun. It's been fun. It has, and thank you to you, the viewer. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, all of that junk. Um, but ultimately, I just don't want you to miss an episode because uh, I'm almost Espanol brings a, a wealth of knowledge about culture in general, uh, and then I guess Latin American culture in in, in specific or Afro uh, culture as well. So, hope you all enjoy the episode. That's it for this episode, and hasta luego. Bye, people. Bye, Tasha. <laughs> <laughs>